Okay, the third segment is uh, where we get into the kinetic molecular theory of gases. <clears throat> and this is uh, sort of a theoretical model of gas behavior. And it's a fact that most gases either obey or come very close to obeying the kinetic molecular theory under most circumstances. So at standard temperature and pressure, most gases will come very close to uh, fulfilling the um, kinetic molecular theory completely. And at any temperature, the, uh, any, basically any higher temperatures, and lower pressures, In fact, uh, temperatures have to fall well below the standard temperature of zero degrees Celsius <clears throat> before uh, most gases will start deviating significantly from the kinetic molecular theory uh, for their behavior. And the pressure has to go well above one atmosphere, uh, usually at least 10 atmospheres before um, gases will start deviating significantly from the kinetic molecular theory. So uh, for most purposes, the kinetic molecular theory is valid. So the tenets of the kinetic molecular theory, the things that uh, basically how it describes what gases are like. So first of all, it uh, posits that gas particles are infinitely small versus the distance between them. <clears throat> or in other words, gas particles have no volume. According to the kinetic molecular theory. In reality, of course, they do have volume. But it's really, really small compared to the distance between the molecules. <clears throat> so, um, so in other words, close enough. Uh, in an, in uh, a sample of argon at standard temperature and pressure, something like 0.01%. Uh, that would be one ten thousandth of the total of volume would actually be occupied by argon atoms themselves. And so, like I said, close enough. If an argon atom were the size of a golf ball, it said that its nearest neighbor would be about four feet away. And so in other words, yeah, the distance between them is really big compared to the size of the atoms themselves. <coughs> um, let's see, another tenet is, okay, second tenet. <coughs> the average kinetic energy of particles is proportional to the temperature regardless of the identity of the gas.
So it doesn't matter what the gas is, <clears throat> its average kinetic energy depends only on the temperature. <clears throat> and uh, atoms move due to thermal energy. And that's um, in, in uh, gases, <clears throat> that's vibrational and translational. Uh, so in gases, that movement is vibrational and translational. So the, the molecules can vibrate in place, but they can also move around and pass to one another from one place to another. There will be an energy distribution for the particles in any given sample. And not all of them will have the same kinetic energy. But most of them will be clustered right around the middle and have something around the average kinetic energy. So you usually get a bell-shaped curve, something like that. <clears throat> so you have a small amount uh, of uh, particles that will have a very high kinetic energy and a small amount that will have very low kinetic energy and the bulk of them will be somewhere in the middle and the average kinetic energy will usually be right about there. <clears throat> okay, so um, the average kinetic energy of gases particles will be the same at the same temperature. And that goes, the, that goes for any gas, doesn't matter what the gas is. At any given temperature, the average kinetic energy will be the same as long as the temperature is the same. So the average kinetic energy of the particles of any gas will be the same at the same temperature. But that doesn't mean that their velocities will be the same. not even the average velocity, because the velocity depends on the mass. So the velocity does depend on what the gas is. So remember Ke kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So they might have the same average kinetic energy but because they have different, different gases will have different masses, they will also have different velocities. It's just that the mass times the velocity squared will come out to the same number for any given gas at any given temperature. <clears throat> also, any collisions between gas particles are assumed to be elastic. And uh, an elastic collision is kind of like billiard balls bouncing off each other. They don't interact with each other. They uh, just uh, bounce off and move in separate directions <clears throat> and in a straight line. And this goes for collisions with other particles, or the walls. <clears throat> and what elastic means is that uh, energy is conserved. That is, the total energy after the collision is the same as it was before. although some of the energy could be transferred from one particle to, an, to the other. Uh, 
<clears throat> so in other words, the particles are not sticky. They don't interact with each other and they're not deformed by the collisions. They don't interact other than bouncing off each other. <clears throat> uh, and um, uh, let's and they're not deformed. Okay, so uh, they exert no fart, uh, forces on each other. except during collisions. And the particles are in constant straight line motion. and they're moving in straight lines <clears throat> in random directions. When they have a collision, they bounce off and go in a different direction, but they move again in a straight line until they hit something else. And so if you were to path, uh, trace out the uh, total movement of uh, path uh, of uh, a particle in a gas, you'll see that it's just really a collection of little straight lines. Uh, you know, it moves in a straight line, hits something, bounces off, moves in a straight line, hits something else, moves in a straight line again, and so on. They're moving at a high rate of speed because the particles are very small and it doesn't take much thermal energy to get them really zipping around. The nitrogen in the air at room temperature and you know around one atmosphere of pressure is moving at something like 1200 miles per hour. <clears throat> so those things are really zipping around. Uh, it was the kinetic molecular theory that led to the derivation of the ideal gas law. <clears throat> because again, uh, basically gases that conform to the kinetic molecular theory of behavior, behavior are ideal gases. Okay. Okay, and then some of the uh, implications of the kinetic molecular theory. So relationships between the kinetic molecular theory and gas law concepts called gassy concepts. Uh, for example, pressure. We already established that pressure is force uh, over an area. Well, that's because particles are in constant random straight line motion. That is, the particles in a gas are in a constant random straight line motion. Um, And 
and that leads to collisions with surfaces. <clears throat> Each collision exerts a certain force on the surface. And the force exerted over a given area of the surface is pressure. Okay, so that's how you can relate um, pressure to the kinetic molecular theory. It's the constant motion. <clears throat> okay, another uh, concept would be Boyle's law that we can relate to the kinetic molecular theory. Boyle's law says that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Um, Okay, as long as the number of moles and uh, temperature don't change. And uh, so if the volume of the gas decreases, the same number, you have the same number of particles in a smaller space. That means that uh, each collision exerts the same amount of force, but there are more collisions per unit of area. So that means more total force. Over a given area. And that means more pressure. So there you go. That's uh, relating the Boyle's law to the kinetic molecular theory. Charles' law, which says that volume is directly proportional to temperature when pressure and uh, number of moles is constant. Well, if the temperature increases, the particles move faster. and uh, exert more force when they collide with the surfaces. So each collision exerts more force. And because the particles are moving faster, there are more collisions. And that means that the pressure increases unless the volume can change. And remember, one of the uh, tenets of Charles' law is that the pressure has to uh, remain constant. So if the pressure can't go up, that means the volume has to go up instead.
because if the pressure goes up and the volume doesn't, that's Gay-Lussac's law. That's a different one. So if the pressure has to stay the same, the volume must increase. in order to decrease the number of collisions per unit area. So each collision is exerting greater force, but there are fewer collisions per unit area because the volume has gone up and therefore the overall pressure remains the same. Uh, let's see, for Avogadro's law, it says volume is directly proportional to the number of uh, moles of gas as long as temperature and volume are, or sorry, not volume, pressure are constant. So uh, if the number of particles, or in other words, number of moles of particles, or N, increases, the number of collisions will increase, <laughs> and the pressure will increase. If the volume stays the same, If we're going to specify that pressure has to stay the same, then the volume has to go up. And that's in order to spread the collisions over a larger area. And that's so that the total force per area can remain the same. Then there is uh, Dalton's law. Remember, Dalton's law is that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the total of the partial pressures of the gases, and so on. This is because all gases act the same with respect to pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. And they can act independently of other gases. And that's uh, partly because there are no intermolecular attractions. The kinetic molecular theory says that uh, the particles have no volume. So they can't interact.
<clears throat> and they all have the same average kinetic energy at the same temperature. So they exert the same pressure under the same conditions. <clears throat> okay, so adding new uh, gases to a mixture has the same effect as adding more of the original gases. Because again, in physical terms, all of the gases act the same. And the pressures due to each individual gas just add up to the total pressure of the mixture. And that's Dalton's law. Okay, so I think we're at 30 minutes now. Uh, that's probably enough for uh, this lecture. So I'll call it there. And we'll pick up next time um, looking at the derivation of the ideal gas law from the kinetic molecular theory. I don't know that we're actually going to, to do that in detail, but uh, we'll just sort of talk a little bit about the fact that it can be done. And so that's kind of the most important thing about it. So until then, uh, see you later.